morning, everyone, and welcome to Today y Mañana. I'm Alex. This is Xavier. We're really excited to have you joining us here today for Today y Mañana. As always, we are presented by Emergent Financial Services. We are powered by Cristel Noel State Farm Agency, and we are partnering with Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking group here in Charlottesville, Virginia. So an exciting show it is. that we have for everyone today. We're going to have at 1030, we're going to have Nikki Hastings, the executive director of Seville Biohub a fun organization uh, making some great connections here in Charlottesville. I'm looking and forward to that. And then at 10.50, we're going to have Esteban Ruiz Castillo and Alejandro Gonzalez. They are the father-son team at Ruiz Landscaping. I have a lot of questions so for them, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I know, as I've heard. Why is it heard. this plan? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot you want to know. How, That's right. Namely, how do you do Why this? Why is this dying? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know even before we start, we've got... A couple of interesting topics um, to talk about finance-wise here today, because uh, I know it's it's something we we touched upon a little bit last Friday because we had the pleasure of being guests. We had the privilege of being on Real Talk with Jerry, on Talk and, with Jerry, uh, and, Jerry and, and Keith. Keith Smith. That's right. Um, and I know among the topics there, we talked a little bit about how there's a reason why you would use, just as an example, there's that you would use a real estate agent. Exactly. Even if you sat there and said, oh, I should be able to sell my own. House. There's so much that they can do for you that goes beyond what you might imagine That's at right. the outset. And I would say the, the devil's in the details, mm -hmm. and, and the story we're going to tell will exemplify why it's important to, to either have a real estate agent, or in this case, obviously, it was a financial advisor that, that knows what he's talking mm -hmm. about or what he's doing. Exactly. So l l let people know about it, because this was an investment news so this investment news, and the reason this came about was because these these poor folks actually went to the S, went to the SEC and the IRS to get a letter of exemption, and of course they didn't. And here's the the story. So um, it was a couple, and they had children. Uh, the father had an IRA, and when he passed away, the IRA went to his wife, which is what usually happens, mm -hmm. and the wife put it into her IRA, right? So it rolled over, no no problems Very there. Simple. What she then did was, because I, I suspect it was a large amount, she created a trust, right? And in that trust, the children were the beneficiaries, right? So then she passes away. So what happens is, it's typical, the children come in and say, hey, you know what? We're, we're really smart, and we'd like to trade stocks. Mm -hmm. So we want to trade with stocks the with the money the that, that we inherited. just inherited, right? And the custodian of this particular trust says, well, you can't invest in stocks the way this is set up right now. So they said, okay, just move it into a brokerage account. So they did that. They moved all that IRA money into a brokerage account. What you have to understand that is that if that brokerage account is not also in a structure of an IRA, or some the whole event then becomes taxable, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm unbeknownst to them after a few weeks or a few days, and I don't know the details because they didn't say what the details were. After a certain number of time, uh, of time they realized I have a tax event here, right? So mm -hmm. imagine, and I again, they didn't tell you how much, but it had to be a large this was amount. A large inheritance. So imagine so in, your investing inheritance that's right, becomes taxable, taxable. In one shot, and they literally lost it all. So I guess that estate must have been huge, and so now this portion is gone with taxes, right? And so the issue was, once they realized that, they went to the, they said, well, now let's put it back. Well, they couldn't put it back, right? So there are rules when you transfer money from certain uh, accounts into mm -hmm. a brokerage account. In this case, it was a trust. The minute you take money out of a trust, you can't put, and it, you back. put it, you cannot put it back. So they went to the, again, to the SEC, and they went to the IRS and said, We'd like a letter of exemption. So they looked at it and said, no, there's a rule, there's a rule, right? So mm -hmm. it's so important that, you're, that you really talk to your financial advisor and say, I've just inherited this money. Or, you know, my, my spouse passed away, I have an IRA, exactly. he had an IRA, what's the best way to go about mm -hmm. that? Because we all know, for example, you have money in a 401k plan, right? You retire from a company and say, well, I don't want the money just sitting, sitting there. there. I, want, the I want somebody else to manage the money. How do you go about that? Well, you can take that money, put it into a rollover IRA, or if you already have an IRA, you can just simply put it into your IRA, and you have 60 days to do that. So there is a time limit there where you can take the mm -hmm. money out, take it out, and you have 60 days. After 60 days, if you don't do it, exactly. if you, again. So if you take that money out and have it come as a check to you, and you, it sits there in your bank you account for 60 it. days, and you forget about it. And on day 61, you're like, oh, yeah, i got to move it to my IRA. It's too, too late. late. Too that late. thing is taxable. That's and right. And the IRS is going to say, right. no, we want 
We want Not only is it taxable, remember, it's you also penalized. have to penalize too. So IRS you get is going to be like, give me 10% and whatever your income tax is right. on that piece. And it just goes to show you, because these, obviously these individuals that inherited this IRA, their philosophy was, well, I don't need someone to tell me what stocks to buy and sell. That's right. Obviously, so obviously their thinking of financial advisor was, well, as long as I think I know what I'm doing with picking stocks, I don't need a financial advisor. It never occurred to them that there are things that a good financial advisor does that and go that's well the beyond. Key, that's the key word, good, exactly. because, I mean, somebody dropped the ball there, right? Because if you have a trust, there's got to be an attorney. They I were, suspect there's got to be a CPA in there. I mean, Well, they were also the, in addition to being the beneficiaries of the trust, they were also the people in charge of managing the trust. Right. So they were doing it all themselves. And... Let's face it, there are things that a good financial advisor does that go beyond just buying and selling stocks for you. Right. They know the rules and they're there to be able to say, wait a second, put the brakes on this. That's right, exactly. You cannot move this right. trust IRA into an average brokerage account because right. you are going to make your entire estate taxable and you are going to lose it all. That's right. And no one was there because they were doing it, doing it themselves. No one was there to tell them, no, wait. I'm your advisor. Don't do this. Exactly. Just exactly. To, to think about what you're doing here. And that's and that's the key. So the important thing is, and, and again, we were, uh, you know, I remember on, uh, on on Friday, last Friday, when we were on the Real Talk, um, and we were talking about this, right? In other words, you know, real estate agent, investment advisor, mm -hmm. you know, what are they there for? Sometimes you may say, eh, you know, I can do that myself. But again, it's the small little details, it's the small little things that sometimes that, that become important in exactly. growing your assets and selling your home and buying your home, whatever it may be, that you can't just the ignore. Small things you don't think about. That's right. You're probably sitting there saying, well, the important thing is what stops am I buying and selling. <laughs> but there's that tiny little detail of what's the account type? Yeah. What type of account are you opening? And, it, and that really, having done this, it really comes down to is the form. There's, a, there's an account application, and you check a little box that says, what's the account type? That's right. And if you check the wrong box, and no advisor is there to make sure, to, hey, what are you doing here? And, and you put that, you transfer it over, suddenly you have a bit. It's the one thing they didn't think about. And, and beyond that, I mean, you know, we all... It's interesting. You, 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 I always love it when I see people and they go to you know Atlantic City or Vegas and they come back and it, I always meet people that seem to win. I mean, I've never so far met anybody that says I've lost money, and so I'm so surprised that Vegas still exists because everybody I know wins. wins. So the house is really challenged by everybody I know. I tell you that much. So the issue is that when you talk to most people, it's like they know everything that they need to buy. They know all the stocks they need to buy. They know everything. The question is, sometimes you may know too much and make them a little mistake. So again, it's not just buying stocks, it's also what do you do with all the money you have? Do you mm -hmm. just want to buy one thing, two things? And, exactly. and we've, seen, we've seen this mm -hmm. before where you know, we see people's portfolios and it's like, you just, have, you just have one thing here, right? So who did that? Well, I don't know, the investment advisor put me into that. And you sit there, how is that possible, right? Because One thing. It, that's right, you just, you mm -hmm. just never know. It may be the greatest thing since sliced bread. It may have grown a thousand percent, but the chances are that it didn't because those are rare opportunities, rare mm -hmm. situations. So again, the concept of looking at diversification, what am I investing in, what's my goals? Mm -hmm. What am I investing money for? How can you help me, right? achieve my goals or achieve the, 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 what I'm looking for, whether it be saving for a car, saving for a house, saving for retirement. That's the difference. It, it is. It's just those, those small things that you, the details you have to focus on and just remembering that, you know, when people tell you, when you're, you're your best buddies, like, you know, I'm doing so great, I bought these stocks. And people only tell you their successes. That's right. <laughs> your, your buddy's not going to come to you and say, hey, I bought this and you, it went down 100%. Exactly. I lost my shirt. Don't buy it. <laughs> right? well, uh, well, no, maybe that's the time to buy it. Maybe right? that's the time to buy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when he'll tell you, don't buy it. That's right. Because it'll be he'll exactly. think it's too late. And you're exactly. like, no, this is exactly the right time. You know, and then our second question today comes uh, Well, that wasn't a also, question. That was just a, 
The that first was part the, wasn't the, the question. Wasn't that was really an observation, question, something an observation. that we that we saw that we and read seen. about, and uh, we just thought we'd share it with the with our audience. It's true, true. It was an observation. We've been just the, some of the research we do that's brought to our attention, and then we did have a, a question from none other than Keith Smith himself, who uh, asked us the Honorable Keith Smith, who asked us the other day. So obviously, we have been talking about interest rates, right? And. I tweeted. You tweeted about it's the It's a problem with tweeting. And people want to know things. So go ahead, yeah, go ahead and tell people what your tweet was. So I think, boy, that's a good question. What was my tweet? But <laughs> I, I think I tweeted the fact that interest rates, so you, 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 interest rates are now down, the 10 years down below 1.75%. So my question was, are we assuming that inflation is not a challenge anymore? Or are we assuming that you know, the economy is, is booming and therefore interest rates, I mean, the economy is going to be in trouble and therefore interest rates have to come down. We didn't, we didn't you know, why is the 10 year down so much? Mm -hmm. So I think um, Keith's point was, you know, how does that relate to the 30 year mortgage? Because Given of course he's in, he's, not, he's, in, he's, in he's in real estate, real estate right? He's into, he wants Friday. to make sure that 30 year mortgage <laughs> is low as possible. He can just keep selling homes, right? <laughs> Maybe they go up, sells them. Um, but anyway, so, so it's an interesting question because in, in reality, the 30 year mortgage is truly um, uh, targeted off the 10 year treasury. So in other words, when the 10 year treasury goes up in yield or interest rates go up for the 10 year treasury, then basically 30-year mortgages begin to go up because it, it is a reflection, you know, the 30-year the okay. mortgage. And basically it's because it trades in the marketplace. So a 30-year mortgage in the marketplace, they say, has an average life of 10 years, mm -hmm. meaning that your security, even though it's a 30-year mortgage, the chances are it's only going to exist for 10 years. So it's targeted off the 10-year, right? Now, the second thing that can also happen with mortgages is that spreads may wind. So in other words, the 10-year may go up, let's say, 0.5%, and a 30-year mortgage may go up 0.75%. Why? Because there's a, there's a, then a, maybe the demand in the marketplace isn't very high, mm. right? In other words, when you create a 30-year mortgage, when the bank says, here's your 30-year mortgage, they take your mortgage, lump it into other mortgages, and then they, and then, and 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 they go sell it else. into the marketplace, right? If there aren't sellers, if the sellers out there or the buyers out there say, I'm not interested, what has to happen, right? They have to increase that rate until the mm, point where the, the buyer says, no, nah, I'm interested now. So it's a kind of a, a, a dual, there's two things that happen with three-year mortgages, but without any doubt, as rates continue to drop, there's a high probability that the 30-year mortgage will continue to drop. And, and we also talked about a 40-year mortgage, and boy, I mean, I'm, I'm so excited. I think we should have 40, 50-year mortgages. No matter what Jerry says, I think we should just have them. Just go for it. Who knows, maybe one day we'll end up like Greece and we'll end up with 100-year mortgage. Like, I'll pay this patent in 100, 100 years. years, that's right. You know, and then the bank will say, at a negative interest rate. There you are. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Know. I'll just keep giving you, giving you money to have this mortgage. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, it's it, very interesting times. It, that's just just fi financially speaking. What's that Chinese proverb? May you, may you live in... Oh, an interesting time. That's right. Uh, when we are. We, are, we certainly we are. are. We certainly are. Because there's just so much going on just in the finance space. And then also, of course, in a really exciting space that we're always excited about, which is biotech. Just, I mean, that's just, right. I, just being on the financial side, there's so many new things and new companies constantly popping up. And the, the, the interesting thing is, so from a finance perspective, we don't see them until they go public that's very right. frequently. That's right. But obviously, there are, at the, even on the ground level, companies that are, that are private, that exist in, in local communities that sometimes you don't know about. Exactly. Because no. they haven't yet taken no, that, they haven't, that the step. Next step. Or if they have, you may not even know that they're <laughs> in your locality. So we're really excited. In this that is vein, great. I know. To be I joined know. by the, Nikki Hastings. She is the executive director of Seville Biohub, which is a networking group that links... Uh, biotech companies here in Charlottesville, but she can tell us yeah, she can more tell about us more. that. I'd love to find Nikki, out how really that works. excited to have you joining us today. Uh, thank you so much. It's uh, really an honor to be here. Absolutely, yeah. This, we've been excited about this for a little while. <laughs> That's right. Knowing that you were, we we you work were so hard in biotech, so it's, it's great to have somebody like you here. Yeah. Involved. So let us know a little bit, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be involved in, in Seville Biohub. Yeah, great. Well, uh, I've been in Charlottesville almost two decades now. I came here for grad school in biomedical engineering at the University of Virginia. And I had this fortunate opportunity when I exited uh, to join a company that was getting off the ground. So as you're talking about all these uh, new startups and ventures, uh, 
this was a company, Hemoshear Therapeutics, that's still here and operating and doing quite well, developing drugs for rare metabolic disorders. Okay. And uh, I got there on the ground floor and, and had this amazing opportunity. Uh, wasn't expected or, or the ride I was uh, planning to be on. Kind of got thrown into entrepreneurship. Uh, and I was a VP of operations there and helped to grow the team and build the company. And uh, through that, just realized, wow, other grad school friends were interested in connecting to other companies that were here. And we said, well, who, who else is in this community? And it was really hard to find out about the other uh, other companies, other spin-outs from UVA, and who's here, who, you know, who do you talk to, and if you're not from the community, how do you kind of break into this industry sector? So, so, so yeah. yeah. So obviously having UVA here is key, right? Because that, that is maybe what is the, 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 you know, the genesis, what sprouts these companies. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the UVA uh, has a strong presence in most of the uh, companies, whether it's, you know, somebody who's graduated from university or that's where they've started their companies out of faculty founders uh, who have started companies, which um, was the case of, of the, the first company I was with. But it, it turned out a few of us company leaders just said, we need to put these companies on a map. And it was really a volunteer uh, basis and organization. We came around, we said, let's build a website, put companies uh, on the website so people could find out about them, you know, who are, who are the CEOs, who are the people to contact, what are they working on, and this is everything from medical devices to drugs and therapeutics to um, diagnostic tools and, wow. and the like, so there's a lot happening here, and, you know, we continued to find more about ha what was happening as we put this website up, hosted some events, and people showed up, and so, you know, we're really about connecting this, this biotech community, resourcing those companies, helping to tell their stories, and, you know, bring, bring them to life, and, and share it with the community broadly mm -hmm. how, how many companies would you say are here in, in local Charlesville or Albemarle County yeah many people are surprised to find out there are over 75 companies oh, oh, working oh, here <laughs> yes companies. yes and I mean this is everything from really early stage concepts mm -hmm. that are uh, to, to much more mature companies uh, that are here that have uh, you know, larger employers are in the 100 to 200 range, but on average, wow. uh, it's about 10 employees per company. Uh, they can generate a lot with a small uh, employ employer right. base uh, in this industry. So, um, yeah, it's it's surprising to many people. <laughs> that is surprising. So, what are the, some of the things you do at Sevo Biohub to bring these groups together or to? introduce them to the to the community at large yeah so we host programs we uh put company leaders on panels and then we bring the the broader community together for networking and hearing those stories we we go deep on a particular topic kind of similar to what what you all are doing on the financial world uh you know just educating on different avenues for them. how do you get a drug through approval in the FDA process it's not easy to do and so you know we're drawing in telling stories and learning from those who've been there and and been successful and and then um, you know we have other programs that we have really spearheaded through support from a statewide initiative called go Virginia it's an economic oh, development yeah. program this mm -hmm. this past year that we've been funded by and uh, we've built an entrepreneur in residence program so we have experienced folks to come in to support those really early stage companies Companies, guide them through how do you get to the next stage what are you working on how do you get funded all, all the things they need <laughs> very get and, funding, and yeah, getting funding that's well, we see it all the time that, exactly that there are even in the pub once they go public there are companies that the idea is great and you 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 suspect it can work but the question is will long, it last will it long last enough minute. is there someone involved with the company who to make sure it lasts long enough to get through fda testing so that it comes out the other that's side right. a lot that's right so that's a key theme so you'll bring in an entrepreneur and does he work with the entrepreneur residents works with numerous companies or you'll pair him with the company how does it yeah work? they'll the um well the companies are often find, finding us at this point saying hey i'm starting on this concept i'm trying to go out for funding and we'll host a pitch event so we say tell us your story we learn about what you're working on now we can share that story with the others in the community hey there's this really cool new idea you guys should talk to them and and then we you know try to understand what their needs are and, and connect them to the things they're looking for do, do any of these companies share labs? Because I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not a doctor, or whatever, or, or research in that area. But I assume that you need, you know, little tubes. I mean, th things like that. You know, I mean, finance. I just need a, <laughs> seen, I just need yeah, a terminal. But movies the movies, the, yeah, little tubes like and things. Flame, they, the little flame. So, you know, it, so do they share labs? So how does that work? Do you know? 
uh, so there are labs that are that some of these companies have here in the community that they've set up and funded and paid for, and uh, you know the wet labs, as you're describing, is actually uh, a need in our community. It's hard to find that space, and there's really zero uh, percent availability in in the city of Charlottesville. So uh, it's something we continue to work on, and companies will find us and we'll, we'll say, well, there's here's some space. We'll put them in okay. touch with a, uh, a real estate broker. They'll you know help them find other spaces, but generally they're having to build out those spaces. Wow. So we've been working very hard and on one of our initiatives in the grant was to put together a development plan to build a wet lab incubator, which would be the shared space. Exactly, exactly. It's really it's really a huge opportunity. And, uh, you know, we've been in conversations with UVA and, and other stakeholders to get something off the ground here. And, you know, I think we will hopefully see that in our community, which will allow all of the great activities to continue sure. to grow and fo be fostered here in Charlottesville. These companies can stay here then and, and operate the great talents here. We really need that infrastructure, but Absolutely. it's a, Absolutely. it's available. You just got to be kind of scrappy about yeah. it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would think that UVA would be more than willing. Right? I mean, they I think they have out. enough money to help out with that. <laughs> I mean, well, that's something that is so so useful, right? So it beneficial is. to everybody. What well, do you want to these able, companies to stay to stay here? here exactly, you know, they can do so much for the community being here and growing here. That's right. Especially since some of them, you know, will take off and become much larger probably companies than they are now. Yeah, for for every employee hired in this industry, we did an industry report in 2020, uh, for every employee hired, there's a one, uh, there's a two X return back into the community. So wow. this is something, you know, that, from a state perspective and also a regional perspective, mm -hmm. there's interest in, in continuing to grow and foster this community. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's tremendous. That's a huge return. Yeah, that's that a huge is. return. Does that, I mean, we that's, work in some, yes. in some uh, I've been on some chamber panels and other things where you'll hear about, you know, 1.2, 1.5, exactly. but two times return back to the community is a huge number. Yeah. It just shows the value of, what, of what's being contributed here. What are, I'm curious, what are some of the ways that you that these companies connect and sort of either give back or connect with the rest of the Charlottesville community that might not know them too well at the outset. Yeah, I think I think it's something that our community and and Civo Biohub is really trying to to promote is that we've wanted to keep barriers for entry to understand what's happening mm -hmm. in the biotech industry, which can be incredibly broad and complex That's right. to the, the broader public. So all of our events that we host are open access. You can see all of our old uh, webinars that we've done since 2020 awesome. online. So, you know, encourage people to go check that out if you're interested. There are amazing founder stories there and people here in our community are doing amazing things and, and you can find out about them. That's not, you know, we're not trying to keep this closed. It's uh, open access. We have events that, you know, we want people to come and learn mm -hmm. and, and connect in and hear hear these stories and, and meet other people. It's really um, that opportunity. Uh, I think other ways that we're connecting in with the broader community is through our internship program. So we've created yeah. an internship program for students to come get experiences within these companies and we've really built community around those interns looking for jobs in industry which mm -hmm. hasn't been done before we've hosted two cohorts we just were finishing actually the students are all finishing up here August 6th and uh, 20 interns in 10 different companies and wow. so you know we're really trying to bridge gaps between uh, the education into industry and I think we've been successful in that but that's it's a huge opportunity to have pipeline of talent into these companies mm -hmm. but also for students to understand understand what those ex what it's like to work in a company. Exactly. Well, and I think to share with the community, sometimes I think people have, at least what I've encountered, the average person, there's like the misconception where you hear biotech and you instantly think like big pharma. <laughs> and it does not really the same thing no, at all. Like no. The things that are being studied, and typically, like you said, they, these, a lot of these companies start out of someone in a lab or someone in an academic setting who says, I've stumbled on something that I think can help people. It's not like a huge company with a bunch of the CEOs sitting around saying, what can I sell now? Yeah. It's, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And sometimes they're in fields, like you said, medical devices or other things that don't have anything to do with pharmaceutical companies <laughs> at all. Correct. Uh, when we say biotech, we take the broadest acknowledgement exactly. of that mm -hmm. definition and all of the different things that are interacting and touching human, human health uh, through innovation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're changing the way that, that things work using for us and our health, and there's, there's actual benefits beyond just, because we see this on the investment side, obviously we look at companies, but, and we're looking, you know, return is part of it, but part of it, the excitement is, you no, know, this company is actually doing something that's helping people. Like exactly. It's, it's helping improve our health, it's not just going to have 
a return and a kind of growth. Yeah, you totally get it. It's, and so we're very mission-driven to, to that end as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, out of curiosity, and you may not know this, but out of all those companies, what would you say is the percentage that actually eventually become public, you know, go into the market? Yeah, we have done that analysis. Uh, there are very few in this region that have gone public. Uh, one this year was Acumen um, Pharmaceuticals, led by uh, Dan O'Connell is the CEO of that company. He's been here in Charlottesville for, for quite some time, so that's a big success point. Uh, you know, a handful over the past few years. Um, but we do see more M&A activity, actually, okay. and yeah. uh, you know we're start we're seeing an uptick in the companies getting funded. The size of those raises in the venture space, Series A's are, are climbing, and and companies are here are getting funded at 25 to 40 million dollars in Series wow. A rounds. So you know there's there's a great uptick in activity, but also the size of that activity is is growing. There's more attention wow. in this market than ever before. So. Which is really good, is that's the that's what they need to really continue their Absolutely. research and make sure it gets that whatever they're working on actually gets out to people. That's right. So that's that right. It can, so that it can help them. Any any news or things that are upcoming that you'd like to share with the audience or let them know about? Yeah, well, we I mean we're trying to get back together in person. So mm -hmm. we're we're right now we're hosting some small events with. Uh, the company leaders bringing people back together, but we're really excited. We've got a, a fall event that we're going to be hosting at a uh, Potter Cidery, and uh, we're big awesome. fans over there. And and it's it's more just bringing everybody back together. Mm -hmm. uh, so people can find out about our events, uh, our webinars coming up this fall, and and that big event hopefully in person if we can have it uh, on on the website. So that's mm -hmm. at SeavilleBioHub.org, and okay. you know just say stay pay attention to the news. We post our news uh, on social media as well as uh, the web website, but there's a lot happening, mm -hmm. a lot of activities and, and really amazing things happening here in Charlottesville. So I appreciate the time to, awesome. to share. So SevoBioHub.org is That's where people can stay connected online and then there's a Facebook page. There's a LinkedIn think, page a LinkedIn and, and, page. and Twitter accounts and Twitter. where we're most active. Yeah. So LinkedIn and Twitter is where you will find okay. the news and, and, and ways to get connected with Sevo Biohub, learn what's going on. Um, get to know some of these companies that are doing yeah. I mean, amazing it's, it's, things. It's, that's amazing. So many eight companies. Wow. I mean, I would have never I, guessed. I, I thought it may be guessed. like in the teens or twenties, but but that's that that's, is amazing. That's great. That, that is are, great. It's it's nice to see that. Mm -hmm. you know? And the community should be connected to a group like this. Oh, to be absolutely. Able to know absolutely. some of the the major employers here that are doing amazing things, and as they get larger, as they some of them get that funding become public, there's probably going to be also employment opportunities. Exactly. Uh, for, for people here, just to so get to know them. Do the so. How would people get to know if they're interested in the internship program? Um, if they're UVA students or someone who's interested, what's the way to get in touch regarding that? Great question. I would say both for uh, interns and job seekers. Mm -hmm. We have a jobs board, and you can post your resume on our website. We, ha we have a careers uh, drop down menu so you can navigate to the internship, find out a little mm -hmm. bit more about that and apply directly through that. We do, it is a summer internship program. So mm -hmm. applications usually coming in. So thinking January, 2022 and, yep. uh, and, wow. but we are seeing more jobs available in this industry. We've seen 300 jobs added over the past wow. two years alone here. So that's amazing. You know, that's, that's great. Find, find those opportunities on our website, and, and that's where people can apply. That's awesome. Yeah, so go to the website. That's a great job. You guys done a great job. Yeah, that's fantastic. That is, that is awesome that you can post your resume directly to there, just connecting, how efficiently connecting employers but, with but potential But look what's important. Employees. you got you got to post your resume in, in January of 2022 for internship, for internship in the summer. In so the summer. you got to get there early, I suspect. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's becoming more and more competitive. Mm -hmm. this, this cohort certainly was, so... We hope to keep awesome. on that. Which means a lot of talent. Great talent, yeah. and the companies sure. are, are seeing seeing the great talent we have here, which is also great. That is That's awesome. Great. Well, talent was one of the reasons Virginia was top uh, number one state to do business. So talent is talent. here. Talent is here in Charlottesville. Nikki, this was such a fun interview. It was. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Yeah. I feel like Very informative. Yeah, yeah absolutely. learned so much. Likewise. You here. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. And be sure to check out seavillebiohub.org. That was that was fun as we as we go ahead and swap, switch to our net set of desks here. Or no, that was like I said. It's you know you you every time every Thursday I learn something new, and I mean I had no idea, not even yeah. a clue that that, that, that many companies existed here. It's you know, amazing in, in the biotech industry, and like I, and like you and I know, I mean we we do so much research in biotech that. You know, it's important even yeah. to just know that also. You it's know, amazing. That's, that's very helpful. Wow. I know that there are so many here. 
and just so many, and that's part of that growth, right, of opportunities that there are here in Charlottesville for yes. people to be connected yes. to great employers with huge prospects, right? These companies have the potential to grow and do incredible things. Absolutely. And it's right here in Charlottesville, 78 of them. 78, wow. County. So many that, that I, there's I didn't know that many companies, space. period. <laughs> Much less. <laughs> Much less 78 in, in, biotech. in biotech Exactly. Alone. Oh my that goodness! Is you you always learn. I think one of the beautiful things about Charlottesville is there's always there's such a strong I think local business community that you're always meeting new yes. business owners. Yes. You know, and I think the same can be said also for Latino business community. How many times we will meet or Nick will bring to us, "Hey, did you know that there's this Latino company?" And I thought, "Wait, wait, <laughs> that's another right. another fellow exactly. Latino company exactly. that's here in Charlottesville that we should talk about." The problem is half of the time they're working, they never come to the show because they're always working. The, well, we got to get them not to work so hard. I we mean, Latinos were hard workers. What can we, what can we say, right? Do we, do we have to? Uh, we have that. So I mean, on that vein, that's yeah, exactly we have, we have, that's uh, exactly where we have Esteban Ruiz Castillo and Alejandro Gonzalez. They are the father-son team behind Ruiz Landscaping, and we're really excited to have you both join us today. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank Hola, you ¿cómo están? Bien, bien, y ustedes? Muy bien, Alejandro. That's a beautiful name. Gracias, gracias. I, I liked, I'm a big fan of Alejandro myself, of Alex myself. Esteban so también, no, super, no. Esteban también. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, tell us a little bit about yourselves, for those who don't know you, and how the company started, how Ruiz Landscaping came to be. Well, I come from Mexico, and I got here in 1994. And since then, pretty much all my life been working in landscaping uh -huh. companies. Then my old boss retired, so then I took myself to say, I'm not going to work for somebody else. I want to work for my own. Muy, muy yeah. bien. Muy, muy bien. bien. I Perfect. love the mentality. Yep. Yep. And Alejandro, how about yourself? Uh, my name is Alejandro, and I grew up in Albemarle. And um, uh, I always saw my parents uh, working really hard. And I saw that they wanted to start their own business. Mm -hmm. and. I'm really proud of how far they've came because they've proven that you can still have the American dream here in, in the U.S. So. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the power, just the beauty of the, being a small business owner. You're able to work for yourself and you can just grow your business the way you want it to look. Yeah. You can do yeah. it as you wish. Uh, ¿Y, y cuánta gente trabajan por ustedes? Uh, somos tres, nada más. Tres. Tengo un hermano y... Ah, son el hermano y el, sí. y el hijo. Sí, mm -hmm. ya cuando... Tenemos ahí que muy ocupados y los fines de semana nos ayudan unos primos o amigos, mm -hmm. pero en la semana nada más somos tres. Yeah. So they have a so family business. business. A family business, yeah. yeah. There's family three business. of them, yeah. and, then, yeah. and then on the weekends, you, you got, of course, and you bring the cousins. And yeah. Yeah. We got so much to work, guys. Yeah. That's right. yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little hand here. That's a little right. hand here. That's right. So we didn't, this one you didn't know, English or Spanish here. Okay. What would I'm you okay. say makes... Ruiz Landscaping unique or como se destaca su compañía de otras? Bueno, because uh, we are trying to do uh, good work in uh, formal, you know, with people can pay. We don't want to be rich, make so much money to be rich. We just want to help people too mm -hmm. and, you know, know more. And we always try to do our best to keep the customers happy. No, Chad, I, I know you guys do beautiful work because Nick has been sharing them <laughs> yeah. on Facebook for everybody. So be sure to check it out. If you go to the Today Manana page, mm -hmm. Nick has been sharing all the pictures that you guys put up. And it's just, it is beautiful. And I can see like it's, it, would you say it's more like it's almost a passion yeah. thing that you really love? Yeah, because we passion. use, it's kind of, sometimes I tell my son the some people that just go for the money, not mm -hmm. because they want to do the job right and everything but they're like you have to pick where you really like to do so then you in the morning you not get out mad and say oh i'm gonna have to go do this but you, you be excited because you're gonna do something new and everything exactly and what's what you like to do in the sense of when you go to a job ¿Qué es lo que, cuando, cuando ve un, una propiedad, qué es lo que le gusta más a, a usted? Uh, de primero verla cómo se ve y, y cuando empieza uno a hacer el trabajo va cambiando, porque hay muchos este, customers uh -huh. que tienen ideas pero no ven el, cómo, se va, a ver, cómo ah, se va a ver, sino el cambio, ya cuando ven el cambio quedan muy contentas y 
That's such an important part. Yeah. I think people lose that sometimes that an expert or someone like, like you both that can come to your property and they can see, and they can see what it can look that's like. Right. Like you look out there and you see, ah, I just have a yard. And, but you both come and you're like, no, no, no. You could have this. This yeah. is what this might look like. You have the vision and then you can turn it into reality. Yeah, yeah. Porque yo cuando, cuando veo mi jardín, yo lo único que veo es un montón de verde, hierbas malas, <laughs> eh, eh, bugs, ¿cómo se dice bugs? Uh, uh, insectos. Insectos, <laughs> un montón de... de, de es, cada insecto creo que en el mundo están aquí en Virginia, en <laughs> mi backyard, creo. Eh, es yeah. increíble, pero es, es interesante ver cómo ustedes piensan de, de su trabajo. Es, es muy interesante. No, es, es, es verdad. Y en that vein, also we can go either way, because I know a lot of, I mean, we talk with Latinos all the time that they might have the dream to start their own business, or to, to do what you did and say, I'm tired of working for somebody, for somebody else. else. I want to yeah. work for, for myself. ¿Qué consejos tienen para otros Latinos que quieren ser dueños de su, su negocio propio? Well, the thing is that they have to think first, like, that not going to go start your business, you're going to start making money right away because you got mm -hmm. to invest and buy whatever mm -hmm. you need to do the job. It's going to take a couple of years. If you give up, it's going to be just wasted because mm -hmm. it's not, they're not going to make money right away. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, mucha gente, and I'm just going to translate what he said in Spanish. El, el señor Esteban dijo que cuando uno empieza una compañía, no es cosa de que inmediatamente vas a encontrar o ganar dinero, sino hay que invertir y a veces toma dos años y, y, y es la pura verdad. And what I was going to say is it, it's true, right? And, and pretty much in just about any Anything. entrepreneur business, you know, there is, you know, not only is there a labor that you have to put in there to attract people to you eventually, right? But sometimes you have, in your case, right, I'm sure you have to buy equipment, right? And that's expensive because, you know, you can't go out there with a little lawnmower that you push <laughs> because you're going nowhere, right? Yeah. So you have to buy things that work well and do the right job. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's, of course, that's expensive. Yeah. Uh, Andres, just I tell would, me a little uh, bit how... I would what? like to add sure. that um, I know a lot of people might be nervous when they start their business because they're like, oh they have a lot of questions and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it like this or like that. But just mm -hmm. from personal experience, uh, everyone should take the first step because once you get those answers questioned, there's going to be hundreds of other uh, questions that you're not going to know the answer to. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to continue to learn. So if exactly. you stick through it, it'll yeah. be really, really beneficial. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. It is, it's, a, really it's, a, well it's a learning process. Yeah. Learning your own business yeah. is a learning process. And I'm 65. Yeah, 65. Sometimes I forget. You know, I mean, I'm good with math. I'm good with math, but my age, boy, 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 that's a tough okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. And I always feel like every every day it's like I, I didn't know that. I learned something, and that's why I love working because you just you keep your mind and, and your body active. Um, but I wanted to ask Alejandro, um, you know, how it how it feels working for your father. I mean, I know it must be great, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. Well. Um, well, I think we get along pretty well. Um, but I, I really like it because, uh, you know, when you get older, you know, your parents get older as well. And I really, really appreciate spending this time that I'm spending with my dad right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll be able to cherish those moments forever. So, Did you guys hear that, what he said? I just want, I just want my <laughs> sons to hear what you just said. That's perfect. <laughs> it's perfecto. It's perfecto. Father. No, it, it, that is true. And it, it, how is it working with your son? Like a family it, business? It, some, yeah, because sometimes we work so much hours, and it's hard to see the children, how they grow. Mm -hmm. When you see they're already growing up, they say, well, what it was, working. Mm -hmm. but it's good to have him every yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Es verdad, es verdad. El, 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 lo que dijo es perfecto. Hay veces uno trabaja tan duro que va a casa. Yo, yo dije, cuando yo empecé lo que yo hago en Nueva York y salí de la casa a las siete y media y ellos todavía estaban durmiendo. Mm -hmm. Venía a casa de vez en cuando a las siete, siete y media porque tenía que trabajar um, tarde y el, y, el, y el proceso de ir a Manhattan y llegar a Brooklyn donde vivía era una hora. Y a veces ya, ya habían comido y era hora de ir a dormir. Yo digo, yo no veo a mis hijos, es que no los veo. Y, y es, es, es como usted dice, 
la oportunidad de poder trabajar con ellos. En fin, es una, una oportunidad de sí. conectar y de, y de vivir juntos en el sentido de el orgullo de ver a, a, a tus hijos crecer y, y, y crear el negocio, ¿no? Vamos a decir. Y conocerse. Y conocerse. Sí, porque, pues, a veces, por lo mismo que trabaja uno, no se conoce uno qué le gusta o qué, qué es lo que no le gusta y así. No, it is. It's, a, it's a special bond, I think, that's yeah. there. Because, I mean, you're, you're college, but you're also, since you're father and son, brothers, like, there's a special bond that you can... It's just beautiful to spend that time with each other every day. Then you know that no matter where, you know, as you grow up and sometimes maybe you'll live in different houses, you'll have your families, but you actually get to come together every yeah. day. Yeah. And every day I get to see my father. It doesn't matter where I'm going to be or, or when I start my own family. And I, no, I get to see my dad every, and my brothers every single day. And that's good. Like, really good. It is. It's uh, and why well, I guess maybe another one of the beauties of having your own business that you're able because a lot of times if you work for somebody else, it's their decision, right? Said, well, here's my son. He said, no, I don't want to hire. Your yeah. Son. But in this case, it's you get to choose to work as a family yeah. together. Well, yeah. sometimes I teach them how hard it is to you know to, to grow up and live, and if they don't want to be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, to, to. So, so a question, una pregunta. Um, durante el invierno, um, like during, you know, during the, the winter. winter months, what is the what, what is it that you can do, or what is it that you do? Because I assume summer and well, spring, yeah. summer, and fall, maybe are your busiest season. So, yeah, um, we actually work with an electrician. His name is John, and he connects pools and pa and spool, <laughs> pools and spas. Uh -huh. And um, we are the ones that do the concrete pads for him and set it oh. up. So, oh, so you do that also? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. that's awesome. Yeah. And because of the pandemic, a lot of people were at home, so there was a, a lot of pools that were sold. So. <laughs> a lot of pools. So <laughs> hopefully we'll be busy during the winter season. Nice. Okay. And spas, people were like... I have nothing to do now. We put a spot. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes, you know, they want their kids to get out of their hair a bit, so <laughs> they let them go outside and do stuff like that. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Yeah. So, so I mean, before we let you guys go, where can people find you? You know, yeah. a, a podemos responder en inglés y en español. Y dónde se puede encontrar su compañía o contactarles? Okay. Yeah. Um, we have a Facebook page uh, called Ruiz Landscaping, and we're working on our website because, unfortunately, the domain name was taken. So we're trying to figure out how we could bypass that, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. So Facebook page. And you Maybe prefer? Alejandro y Esteban Landscaping. Although there's three actually, so you got yeah, your brother yeah, too. Does your brother is your brother part of the company no, too? No, no it's just he is. so there you are, Alejandro y Esteban Lansky. Perfecto, <laughs> perfecto. So with name. Facebook, it is Ruiz Landscaping. I think it's to get it the exact one. I think Ruiz Landscaping 21. Yes, yes. Ruiz yes. Landscaping 21 on Facebook. Okay. Put that in there. You'll get. Make sure you get the right Ruiz yes, Landscaping. Yes, yes. You don't want those other guys <laughs> yeah. in other cities. You want Ruiz Landscaping 21. So where does the 21 come from? Uh, out of curiosity I think it was just the email he had and okay. we just left it yeah. like that for now. <laughs> go for it yeah. well you can't mistake it right there's no. only be yeah. one Ruiz Landscape being 21 you can find it and then people can just call message you yeah. call yeah. you yeah. 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 And, and get in touch with you yeah so be, beautiful. be sure to check it out there's some great again there's some great beautiful photos beautiful. of the work you guys have done thank you um, so I mean you talked about landscaping now we know pools Spots. Well, not pools, but I mean the concrete. The concrete, yeah, concrete, 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 concrete yeah. 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 People are going to start calling them for pools. No, no, no. no, yeah, no, no. <laughs> no don't call them to put in the pool. Yeah. But when, you, when, you, when you're adding the pool, they will come yeah. and do the they concrete. Some the for patios. Yeah, yeah. hardscaping as well. Okay. Yeah. Hardscaping okay. as well. Yeah. Fantastic. We yeah. in. Thank you guys so much. Oh, this thank has been you a lot of fun. Balance. Thank you for having A real blast. Now, is this a day off? No, we're no, going we to go back to work. Right, right. Yeah. I just want to make sure you guys are working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but with Latinos, right, the problem is yeah. working too little. Is that sometimes we no, work no, they too work too hard. hard. Yeah. I know. No, gracias por venir. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias por invitarnos. No, gracias, gracias por venir. <laughs> ah, so much. No, that, that was that, that was, was, that, was, that, was that was interesting. That was good. Yeah. It, it's always you know it's it's always a lot of fun to you know in addition to chat with entrepreneurs, um, you know chat with people that that you know. 
they were in a business, right? And then they had the opportunity to buy that business. And you can, it, it's interesting because you can see in the way they speak, you can see it in their eyes, the passion they yes. have for what they do, exactly. right? Because- Which is what Esteban said, not, you can tell when someone is not in it for the money. That's They're right. They're there because they love what they do and that's they right. want to do a good job. They have the pride of wanting to do a good, do a good job, job. Exactly. With what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. And, and like I said, if, if, you know, if, if you work for somebody and they retire, Sometimes it's like, okay, you know, I'm going to do something else. But mm -hmm. to, to take over that business means that you actually enjoy doing what you do. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. Boy, if you, you know, it's, if you like what you do for a living, I mean, half of the battle is over. Exactly. You know? Which is, it, it helps, it, it's great for you, but then it also shows in what you're, in the service you're providing. That's right. right. When people love what they do, you, it shows up in the quality of the work that they produce. Yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. That's how, that's how it works. So it's good. So, so, it's, it's, so landscaping and hardscape and, uh, and it's three of them. Wow. They, they, they got to work pretty hard. Work pretty hard. Make, that's, that's a lot of hard work. That's, I've seen that some of the garden work and phew, that's not easy. It's hard know? work. Yeah. So especially if you don't want to be doing it yourself. Hot, <laughs> humid day. Hot, humid day. You know, 90 degrees. That's why you want. humidity. That's uh, why you want Ruiz landscaping. Bugs all over you. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to be out there? <laughs> that truth to a couple of people. <laughs> Maybe you. Maybe me. <laughs> Definitely me. In, in this weather. So that's why I, I appreciate so much yeah. the, the sacrifice and the exactly. hard work that goes exactly. into doing that. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it, is, it is tough. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got... Uh, that was fun. No, we had a great day. We had a great show. We had a great day. I mean, I think about it from, from biotech companies and, and, and here, you know, here is um, you know, a group companies. that puts it together yep. to a, a small entrepreneur that is, you know, outdoors and working. Mm -hmm. It's, again, it's, to me, it's what makes this country wonderful is that yeah. all these opportunities are available. Dream. You can, you can find the route that you want to pursue, right? It's not a situation where they take you and they say, you need to go this way. You need right? to do this. Exactly. No, yeah. you decide what you want mm -hmm. to do, and then the passion comes out of that, and I think exactly. that's the best. And, and like Esteban said, you decide whether you want to be your own boss. That's right. Whether you want to put that's in. That's even the best. And it's hard work. It takes the sacrifice. It takes the patience. It takes the time. But you get to make that decision that's and right. say, yeah. I want to be yeah. an entrepreneur. I want to do it myself. Yeah. And you can yeah, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah, and and uh, yes, it comes to trials and tribulations because you know, at the end of the day, you're paying for that electric bill, and it's not mm -hmm. like you go to work and you don't have to worry about that. You have to worry about. It. You go home sometimes, and now begin to not just do your your, you know, your home bills, but you also have business bills business that you bills. didn't have a chance during the day because you're working. Because you're working. So it's a long day, but. It, like you said, though, you're your own boss, right? You, you do as you wish at that point in time. Exactly. And, 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 the, and you reap those benefits, and that's how you become pride. You know, you, pride is involved in what you do. Exactly. Yeah, to be, to be passionate and, pride and proud of what yeah. you do. There's no, yeah. there's no shame in being an entrepreneur. In fact, no, it's, a great, it's, a, it's great a great thing. It's a great thing. It's a wonderful great thing. thing. Yeah. Um, and we had a couple of comments today. We, um, Daniel Pettit was watching earlier. He said also, 10 year more on a car affected by, by rates. That's right. Which is That's a right. very true, great comment. And then uh, Andy Toplin says, loving, she likes the bilingual interviews. Okay. Thank you, Andy, for watching. It's a pleasure to have you watch. You know, next time what we'll there do is, it. even if they only speak English, I'm just going to ask questions in Spanish. There you are. See, <laughs> there see what go. happens, right? There Imagine you, we bring a couple of... Uh, they can just say, si, si, si. We'll be like... <laughs> what? You didn't tell me it was bilingual? <laughs> just to play a, a joke every once exactly. in a while. Next time we're on with, uh, with Keith, we can throw it in Spanish. <laughs> well, if I don't do the show and speak Spanish... If I don't do the show and then yeah, show the bilingual... Hopefully he's not watching the show, so he'll know. Oh, he'll know. practice his Spanish or something. <laughs> Um, so much fun. And next week's going to be a lot of fun as well. We've got two more um, well, we have, great entrepreneur we have companies. Our first, here, right? first, I mean, our powering sponsor, we're going to have Christelle Noel, who is, of course, the owner and the, the head agent at uh, Christelle Noel State Farm Agency. So she's going to join us. Okay. I mean, all well, the way from Richmond. Our, all the way from, from Richmond. You know, I mean, at this point, is she not like, she's got to be one of the most awarded agencies <laughs> in the country. Every time I looked, I'm like, 
is that a new award or is that the one from two months ago? Said, no, it's a new one. It's, an, it's another, another award, a new milestone for Christelle Noel's yeah, that's agency. Wonderful. So it's yeah. awesome to see. So she's yeah. going to join us. Okay. Tell us how things are going. Share more about what she does. Okay. Um, and then, of course, and then Colleen Han Perone from Perone Robotics. Wow, is okay. going to join us. So they, I mean, speaking of robotics, those, yeah. Speaking of those companies doing interesting things that you didn't know about prior to, it's going to be really awesome uh, to have her on talk about what they do, the interesting products that they are putting out. Unbelievable. Who found so that? The one and only, okay. the social media ninja slash chief marketing officer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we should. Give him the no, ego no, he, of calling yeah, listen, him that, he, but If he does the job... He does do the job. He's got to get the credentials he for He does it. do the job. So that's, yeah. that's going to be a lot of fun. Imagine two. It, it'll be interesting when he gets a nice business card. He's going to put comma this, comma that, comma, that, comma so ninja, I, comma CMO, comma who knows what I else. Mean, I mean, we'll put that SMJ for social... Oh, SMN for social media ninja. Okay. Yeah, Not just you, ninja. But you really want ninja on your uh, Yeah, imagine somebody comes up to him and says, Jeech. <laughs> to try to attack him. Just <laughs> think he's a fellow ninja. Oh, goodness. But that's going to be a, f- a couple of fun yeah, interviews. That's going to be good. That's going to look forward to Something that. really new and then a great friend and a great partner of today, Manian and Ristel Nova State Farm. Looking so, forward to it. Looking forward to both of them. And of course, where could we be without thanking Jerry and Judah for, have, for making this possible? I love Seville Network. And our audience. Course, our audience. Which comes up with great questions. Comes up and, with and fantastic and questions and always appreciate you all for watching us. And of course, Emerging Financial Services, our powering sponsor, Cristal Noel State Farm, and our partner, Forward Adelante, the premier Latino networking group here in Charlottesville. As always, it's so fun to have you all watching us and joining us. Be sure to share with your friends. Let them know about this awesome interview. Let them know to check out Seville Biohub. Check out Ruiz Landscaping on Facebook. It is Ruiz Landscaping 21. Type it in there on Facebook and you will find them. And uh, be sure to watch us next week as we have some more fun interviews. And until then, as always, hasta mañana.